Picture this. You finally got hired by the thing of your choosing. You got to walk on the one and a half mile long park on top of building 21. You've eaten all the ice cream and sweets from the sweet shop. You've already probably started to get tired a little bit of the free food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You've used the gyms and every other amenity, including the wood shop, and yet you decide to quit. Yes, you spent hundreds of hours studying leak code problems till your fingers hurt. And yeah, you went through plenty of practice interviews, but for some reason, things are just not as shiny as you thought that they were, or maybe it's just not the right fit in terms of roles. Well, that's what happened with this one Reddit user named The Real Tibbles and Bits, who recently shared on the data engineering subreddit about their experience working at Meta and quitting after only four months. I think they did a great job kind of outlining their experience and kind of what they felt. So I wanted to kind of add another data point and add my perspective in terms of what I found was kind of correct in terms of like maybe what feelings I can say a lot of people resonate with because I think some feelings are valid. I also wanted to add in a few data points from my own perspective where I might have maybe not necessarily disagreed, but just had a different experience, which happens at most companies, especially ones that are big tech, because there are so many different teams, you're likely going to have a wide variety of experiences. And I'm going to add in my own perspective layered on top of theirs into three different sections. Uh, the first kind of being around where I kind of agree with the feelings that they had. Uh, the second being the differences in terms of my experience. And the third, being more focused around lessons that you can learn from this situation, because I think there are opportunities here where if you are in the situation where you kind of feel like this Reddit user did, there are some possible growth opportunities or chances for you to actually take advantage of the situation and try to look for opportunities for growth. But I do want to add that I think the Redditor made the right decision in terms of if a role doesn't feel right for you, it's probably better to quit early rather than try to drag it out too long, just because you do wanna make sure you're producing your best work. And if you're not happy in your role and you're already feeling that within the first few months, and especially at a FANG where you might be really excited to work at it, well, then it might not be a bad idea for you to leave because you're likely going to only have that feeling continue to grow rather than diminish. But let's go over their post on Reddit. Looking at their post, they kind of broke it down into a couple different categories. First, kind of breaking it down into the feeling that most of the work was just metrics. Um, then the second being that they felt like a lot of what they were interacting with was tables. Third kind of being the fact that the scale that they thought they were going to experience wasn't really there for them. And fourth being that they felt like they couldn't impact the company. So starting with the feelings that I can definitely understand what they felt, I'm going to start with this first section here where they talked about it's just metrics. Skipping over the fact that they reference it's just metrics, I'm going to point out the section where they referenced the fact that the data infrastructure at Facebook is mature. And by Facebook, I mean Meta. This is very true. And this is also very challenging for a lot of people because I think as data engineers, we want to solve complex problems. And if a lot of that complexity has been solved already and the infrastructure is already in place, it's not necessarily as exciting for us to kind of come in. And I'll say that there are plenty of people that I've worked with that left Facebook for this very reason. Their assumption was that they were going to do a lot more in terms of like DevOps and a lot more straight programming and building infrastructure and writing object-oriented code and things of that nature. And when they didn't find that and they, they didn't find the satisfaction in their work, they then often would leave or try to switch into working as a software engineer because oftentimes some data engineers are much more software engineers that like data and not purely data engineers. And the truth of the matter is Facebook having a mature data infrastructure is arguably a good thing. If you are a company that deals with large amounts of data, you want a mature data infrastructure. So in one regard, it's kind of like shooting themselves in the foot. They need a mature data infrastructure to make sure that they output quality data quickly. But at the same time, in order to solve this problem, they need to create a lot of tooling and solutions that took a lot of the fun, at least for engineers, out of it. It's not as exciting anymore. So I totally understand why this person felt like, oh, everything is so mature. And so what's new for me to add in? And that, that can be very challenging. And again, they are not the only ones that have felt this. I know people who have left within, again, six months to a year for this very same reason. The other point that I really want to highlight, I actually referenced in a previous video, which was the fact that, you know, although Facebook job descriptions for data engineers seem to require you to have some experience with distributed systems, when you actually start working for Facebook, well, you know what? Let me just take a quick clip from my previous video. Jamie, pull up that clip. That you should understand Hive and Presto. This is kind of silly because as someone who worked at Facebook or Meta, here's the thing guys, all of that stuff is very abstracted away. You don't 
actually need to understand how it works under the hood, you're just honestly writing SQL. So at the end of the day, although you might think you're gonna get to work on things like Presto at a very low level, it's really all just SQL. And again, this can be very disheartening for people who are really looking forward to doing more. But abstracting a lot of this complexity away also ensures that data engineers are outputting beta faster. And this is where I'm going to add in some of the differences that I experienced in terms of my overall experience at Meta, the artist formerly known as Facebook. So personally, I worked at a much lower level in terms of data engineering, where I was very much directly connected to a lot of systems, integrating a lot of systems in terms of external vendors and pulling in data, working with SFTPs, pulling data from internally built systems, and really just scraping tons of data from multiple sources. So in their post, they referenced the fact that a lot of what they were doing was just pulling data from other tables. And the truth is, I was probably the one building a lot of those other tables. I was probably doing what they were hoping they'd do. Um, you know, I was spending tons of time connecting to different APIs and scraping that information. I was also spending a ton of time creating services that would connect to SFTPs. I mean, I've never seen so many different ways you can actually pull data from different SFTPs, but I had to kind of figure out a way to manage all of these different possible options that we would get because I didn't realize there were so many ways you could encrypt a file with PGP, whether it's you encrypting it, the sender encrypting it, you encrypting the key that the sender sends and signs, and there's so many different signages. Um, yeah, I definitely got more confused than I ever wanted to or learned more about PGP than I ever wanted to um, overall. But yeah, so I did a lot more, I think, of what some people might find interesting, at least as a programmer. I think another thing that I was pretty good at was finding ways that I could impact other teams that I was working with because I was really good at not just doing technical work, but also creating relationships, trying to understand problems that people were facing in different teams, and in turn, then kind of aggregating all that information and developing projects around that. And that's arguably what I think Facebook really pushes you to do. You're not going to, I think, learn as much technically if you already have a solid base and have worked a few years in the industry. But if you've already worked technically in the industry, I think one of the major opportunities that you have is that you can learn a lot more in terms of how to drive business value because a lot of the problems that are a little more low level and that are just arguably repeatedly solved at other companies and never really fully kind of set in in terms of a solution are solved at Facebook. A lot of the low level things that you're going to deal with are kind of solved and you're really just writing a lot of like parameterized code in terms of the fact that it's very similar to Airflow and you're really just often doing something where you stick some SQL uh, with some sort of dependency list, with some sort of timing schedule, a few other parameters, and then just telling it when to run really. And that might not be exciting, but it's also scalable. Everything in the modern data stack that other companies are trying to implement, Facebook has almost in one single tool and then has kind of like built other tools around it to manage it, like lineage and data discoverability and observability, all these things that are very challenging they've done. And so they've solved a lot of these problems. And so it can be a lot less interesting, again, if you're a data engineer that is used to doing a lot more of this work. But again, this lets you focus on the business value more and less purely on the technical bits. And again, the Redditor did say that Meta was a fantastic company to work for. They just didn't feel like it was for them. And I do think they did a good job of outlining why they had these feelings. Now, I do want to add in just a quick point of my own. If you're currently in a situation where you need the job that you have and you don't have the flexibility of leaving, but you still want to make the most of the situation, here's a quick lesson that I've had in the past at a previous company where I kind of felt the same, where I kind of felt like my work was kind of boring, it wasn't exciting, and it was not what I had signed up for. So let me tell you a quick story, and hopefully you can use it in the future to kind of try to make the most of any situation. So at one company that I worked at, when I started, again, I had the title of data engineer, but really a more fair name for this job was data operations engineer or something like that, because really all I did was run a PowerShell script on a CSV file and then have some sort of semi-automated QA system that would kind of run, but then I'd have to like output the results into an Excel file and save it somewhere. And it was really, arguably boring. You know, I thought that this job was going to have a lot more development and I was really excited, but it didn't. And this was really a bummer for about the first month or two as I was kind of doing the job, but I told myself I was going to do my best at this job. And I, I you know, tried my best. And then I started looking for opportunities. And I think this is a skill set that's hard and I'm still trying to work on it. And this is something that I was really trying to hone at Facebook is looking for opportunities to provide value 
that maybe no one is. So when I looked at my work, what I realized is we were kind of doing the same work over and over again, right? Like I just told you, we were running some sort of PowerShell script, giving it some parameters that really just had to do with the file name and a few other things. We would run it. We would then make sure the data went in correctly, run some QA scripts, etc. Most of this was semi-automated. So I was like, well, why not just fully automate it? So I spent the next few weeks kind of building a website that kind of like managed all the files that would come in because we tracked all of those piece of information um, automatically. So I would like track all of that in this website, you know, storing it in a database. And then it would just automatically basically set up the script to run and you could click a little button, just hit run and it would run the whole process, the automated QA, the running of the file, pushing it to production, everything. Well, obviously I was very proud of this. So I showed it to my uh, director of engineering at the time. And she looked at it and I think she realized that it was way too complex and, you know, maintaining it would be very difficult. So we did not go with that. But what it did show her was the fact that I was able to actually build things and do more than just, again, run a PowerShell script. So when we actually built two new products, I got to be the developer that did a lot of the core code and system design. And honestly, I felt really lucky and I did kind of make that opportunity for myself. So sometimes that is a good option. Again, if you're stuck at a job, you can't quit and you kind of have to stay around anyways you might as well try to make the most of that opportunity. It always sucks when a job isn't exactly what you thought it would be, but more than likely there's generally an opportunity to learn something at most jobs because every job has its challenges, especially if you work in the data field. I find that most data problems are consistent everywhere. Everyone has data quality problems. Everyone has timing issues with when files and data lands. Everyone has syncing issues in terms of one report doesn't match what another report says. And trying to run away from these problems generally doesn't work because every company has some level of this. But I do think Threaditor probably made the right decision because despite all of the fancy benefits that they were getting at Meta, and despite probably only really doing three months of actual work, since the first month is often a boot camp, they still decided that it wasn't for them. And again, if they figured it out that quickly, that's great. Gary Tan once said, at every job, you better be learning or earning. If you're doing both, that's best. And if you're doing neither, you need to quit. And maybe this individual felt like they could make just as much at another job. I mean, we are at a point where technical people can make a lot of money regardless of the company they work at. So they probably could make just as much somewhere else and they clearly weren't learning. So making this decision was probably right for them. And it might be for you. Hopefully this perspective sheds some light into what it's like working at Meta. There are a lot of pros to working in a company like this. One benefit I didn't mention earlier was all of these tools I just told you about that we had at Facebook. And actually I had basically a principal level data engineer tell me this advice. Basically all the tools we had at Meta, if you could then go either build it yourself into some sort of like startup or just build it at another company, you could really stand out. So there's a lot to learn at most of these companies because they do have such mature infrastructure and other companies don't. So if you can either build it at that company or build it as a product and sell it, that is a great opportunity. With that, guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.